And that is why men have always run the world. And look at the job you've done. Sunday at 9, and insanity takes the form of a liberating force in Turning World. Madness like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I'm lost, but I'm free. I grab that freedom and flee. Whilst at 10, The Handmaid's Tale depicts a nightmare vision of civilization blighted by the future. You're going to be handmaids. You're going to serve God and your country. Sunday night from 9 on 4. Girls first, next on four, Sam Fox spills the beans on boob jobs and Patsy Palmer is up for a laugh, all in the girly show after the break. It was obviously made by some form of higher intelligence because the control panel actually communicated with us. Two wall. Cool check from Zanussi. Lulievre is a long-established French company. We manufacture furnishing fabrics of the highest quality. Lulievre and DHL work hand in hand. They carry our image worldwide. I never say no to my clients. Lulievre never says no. DHL never says no to me. DHL, we keep your promises. Now this takes me back. Today I'm cooking corn for the kids using burgers, nuggets, and fillets. Corn's meat-free, low on fat, and tastes great. I'm serving the fillets with some seasonal vegetables and these crispy nuggets with a salsa dip. <laughs> now, nothing beats a classic burger. I'm using lettuce and tomato, sliced pickle, and some mayo. Mmm, tasty. All right, kids, Mark's out of 10. You've got to get off to a good start, Henry. Take your finances. It pays to get a good team behind you. Like those extra life chaps. They see to it that you get more pounds working for you from day one. Not planning properly for the future can really hit you where it hurts. And we don't want to leave ourselves over to that, do we, Henry? With more pounds working for you from day one, it's an equitable life, Henry. Call party time now on 0891 29 29 29. That's party time on 0891 29 29 29. Call now. You make sure they're up on time. You sort out the bills. You do the gardening. You're everybody's agony aunt. And you give the kids a wash. So you need new and lot choice cuts. Not just good for you, it's served in delicious meaty jelly. But you still have to do the dishes. New choice cuts in meaty jelly. Live a lot, wag a lot, win a lot. The world of hooker choice is constantly challenging. One always tries to be at the cutting edge of design. My business bocker was an instant classic, but these days my inspiration comes literally straight off the street. The Worthington Commission was a marvellous opportunity, and to allow full enjoyment of the velvety smooth dream of a pint, the fit had to be loose. But above all, these are real clothes for real people to, in reality, wear in the real world, really. My models adore the clothes, and I'd feel so mean taking them back. Hey. Model decline. This is the Frankie Fraser Madometer. A low myth down here, a mad as a lorry up that end. Locals say they've seen the statue of Mary driving a car through a field. And there's virgin DNA in the plaster. Brass Eye, Wednesday, 9.30 on 4.
On the Girly Show, we check out check a mate who check up on your cheating date. We have a chat with Patsy Palmer and find that she's a perfect charmer. Oh no, I've never you. said that, Nancy. No, Plus, this girl reveals what you can do with big hair, and Sam Fox reveals why she's downsized her hair. You can't have these things chicken about. that seems to get the press in a frenzy it has to be wanker of the week nice girls they claim don't say wanker well we've got news for you boys nice girls not only say it they do it as well and tonight we're putting the finger on a girl who's been overdoing it a bit in our first wankerette of the week <laughs> tonight's wankerette of the week is a simpering simple-minded actress who gives all us blondes a bad name. It's Patsy Kensit. Yeah. <laughs> Patsy, Patsy, you wanted to be a pop star, but you failed. So you married one. Then he failed. Now you want to marry another. Now, Patsy, you're supposed to consult your astrological charts before you wed, not the bloody top ten. <laughs> <laughs> your first attempt to marry Liam went horribly wrong. Now, what happened? Did he find out that the white stuff they throw at the end is just rice? Hmm. Oh, <laughs> Patsy, your lips are just like your knees. They've never met. Now, <laughs> what's that crap pout all about? Has it been stitched in place? Well, you've been stitched up by the girl. It's because Patsy Kensit you are tonight. Wanker of the week. You had a simple mind who you just left behind to lick the flavour of the week. You're just a groupy chick who's made some poopy flicks, so you're the wanker of the week. Noel's got the talent. You're the wanker of the week. Yes, you are. Chris Evans and Fergie, a thing or two. I bet her to be a gingerhead loudmouth and get away with it. As EastEnders screaming teen, she's become a queen of the soaps and a fully fledged girly icon to boot. So forget Patsy Kenzie, our bothersome wanker, and welcome Patsy Palmer, our beloved Bianca. <laughs> Now, welcome to the show, Patsy. Thank you. EastEnders. Top soap. <laughs> yeah. You're a top character. Oh. But I was thinking, when I saw you before, I was thinking, God, but everyone calls you Bianca. Because yeah, I do it. Yeah, Bianca. I mean, I could do it. Bianca, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't know why people say it like that, but obviously. It's... I mean, are you anything like Bianca in real life? Well, I look like her and I talk like her, but <laughs> I wish I could get away with some of the stuff that she does. And it's quite nice playing a younger character because you can sort of be cheeky and, you know, do all those kinds of things that. You can't do it unless you're 14 and <laughs> no way, really. Well, Bianca, she does wear some dodgy clothes, doesn't yeah. she? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I remember the silver bubble jacket. Oh, no, She's, um, she loves to, that. To name a few, yeah. <laughs> well, you were born and bred in the East End, so yeah. you're probably best qualified to judge. Is it really like that classic community in the real East End? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I live just a little way around from my mum and 
you know, everyone pops in for a cup of tea and a chat, and you go it's up the road. It's Bianca, isn't it? <laughs> 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 I'm just is just it? Like, shout out! <laughs> 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 shout out! <laughs> um, but there is something missing from EastEnders, isn't there? Well, we always say they should have a pie mash shop because we've got two down Bethnal Green Road and it's lovely. Well, what And you'd be surprised, a lot of people don't even know what pie mash is. Well, you used to go for pie mash in your school lunchtime, didn't you? Yeah, lunchtime, every, every lunchtime from school. See, it's a north-south thing, I used to go and have a pasty barn cake. Did you? What's that? It's a pasty on a barn cake. Because they have, like, chips and gravy and that. And yeah, that, oh, I came there to think, London. Oh, I can came there to London, went into a chip, I can have chips, gravy, put in peas, scraps of pea wet. <laughs> and they didn't understand when they come, we don't do Say gravy. Don't, okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't think I could. <laughs> But um, what EastEnders can't do for you, we can, because I think we've got some pie and mash oh, for you lovely. tonight. Oh, I feel lovely. I hope it's from Kelly's. So, uh, can we have it? <laughs> Twin <laughs> it. Oh, it's Matthew. Oh, look at that. Oh, lovely. And you know I know Matthew, you see. This is another EastEnders. Really? We used to be friends. As young people, like really? children, I won't be patronising, but... Same school. Was he always so handsome? School. Yeah. Bless him. Yeah. Could he always carry pie and mash so well? I've never seen him carry pie and mash. I've seen him throw up a bit of pie and mash. Well, can we have a taste of this now? What's this green stuff on it? Liquor. Which is what? I don't know. It's just made up of like flour and water and that. I don't know. It looks horrible. It's nice, though. Someone said before that it's something to do with eels. I see eels there, look. Are you going to eat one? I'll eat, I'll eat an eel if you will. Do you dare me to eat them? Yeah. Shall I? Yeah. Mmm, lovely. <laughs> mm. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> that is nice. I won't oh, eat it there, yeah. but... Oh. <laughs> They're quite filling, aren't they? I can yeah. have another bite. <laughs> well, that was lovely, Matthew. Thank you very much. Thanks, yeah. Matt. It's all right, Jim. Off your truck, young man. <laughs> You can't have you on the show without getting like a bit of gossip, you know, do you reckon? <laughs> uh, Sanjay, very worried about Sanjay, because he's a bit of a Jaffa at the moment. <laughs> Jaffa, seedless. <laughs> what? Seedless. <laughs> what that means? Oh, it's this north south divide, I'm worried about it. What's that mean? Seedless. seedless. His, his jism isn't jumping very well. <laughs> Sorry, you see, respectable East End girl. I don't you know what you're talking about. So, is Sanjay, you know, is he going to get better? And oh, I don't know, you see, I, I'm not really allowed to say. Oh. oh. No, sorry. Ooh, but if you can't tell us that, you've, you know, Tiffany. Whose baby is it? Is it Tony's or is it Grant's? Oh, I don't know about that either. <laughs> <laughs> Do you actually know, though, but you just well, can't no, tell us? Well, no, to tell you the truth, I don't know. And nobody knows because it's such a, you know, it's such a thing that everyone wants to know. So it'll be a nice uh, surprise when it does come out because yeah. you'll be able to tell right away who it is. Because here on the girly <laughs> show, we've managed to wangle up a couple of artist impressions of what the baby will look like. Now, first up, I think <laughs> if it was Tony's <laughs> baby, <laughs> that's what it look like. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to see Grant's, yeah. Come on, where's Grant's? Oh, oh Lord! <laughs> what do you think's best? <laughs> oh, the little ants behind the head. I know, I thought that was like glamour, baby. <laughs> oh, what do you think? I don't think? know, but I like the Tony one. Put that back on. Let's see Tony. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's really, it looks like some kind of a boy band, doesn't it? Some horrible. <laughs> I don't know, I think the Tony. I don't know, I wouldn't like to say they're both. Yeah. <laughs> you've been absolutely brilliant, but I can't let you go until you've taught me how to shout Ricky. <laughs> like you shout, because that is one of the best things about Bianca's character, isn't it? The way she shouts, Ricky. Right. Could you do it? Go on, do it. Do it. Ricky! <laughs> <laughs> so oh, you've been brilliant. You've been so much fun. Thank you very much. Everybody, it's Patsy Palmer. <laughs> Tonight's Boogie Wonder Boy is 21-year-old Paul Maxfield from Sunderland. Paul's hero is Elvis, but we think he needs a bit of work in the pelvis department. Time to book yourself into Heartbreak Hotel. I will make it a single room, Paul.
very clear, size does matter. But we're not talking about what men have got down below for once, we're talking about what women have got up top. When it comes to barnets, we think big is best. So please welcome our first Mile High Club contender. <laughs> What's your name and where are you from? I'm Heidi from Milton Keynes. Heidi, give us a twirl. Look at that, everybody. It's massive. <laughs> good colour, good colour. Now, have you always worn your hair like this? Yeah, majority of the time. So how long does it take <laughs> to get ready in the morning then? About um, three quarters of an hour. You must be the queen of backcombing. <laughs> like, well, you, you are a threat to the ozone layer all on your own, but before I allow you to join the club, I have to find out just how hard your helmet is. Now, to find out how much G-force your hair can withstand, the twins are going to strap you into this chair, and as long as your hair can survive level three, which is the full blast of this fan, you're in. Are you ready, Heidi? Yeah. OK, are you ready here? This is quite scary. OK, I think you should all strap yourselves in. All right, right. OK, let's go to my, um, my windometer. You ready, Heidi? We're going to go for level one first. Level one, here goes. Level one. God. OK, now it's not enough. It's not enough. Level two. Let's see if we can ruin this haircut. All right, it's still in place. Let's go for G43. Well, look at that. Your hair did survive, Heidi. <laughs> the ultimate blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got a little bit of a present for you. Jason, come here <laughs> with the hair. Look at that. Thank you very much, Heidi. <laughs> After the break, this man does the sneaky on those cheating snakes. Did you ever catch him in any kind of affair before? And Sam Fox gives us a peeky of her Bollywood greats. But first, we catch up with the student sisters at North Hearts College as they queue up another golden disco classic in the Union Bar. We are family. I got all my sisters with me. We are family. Get up, everybody, and sing. <laughs> Now there's a foundation that's smudge-proof, touch-proof, and hug-proof. Max Factor's new lasting performance. Frank's collected loads of NBA player cards from multi-packs of Uluru's. I'm sure he won't miss a couple. Boy! No! Wrong again. The FX Performer from Wilkinson Sword. A razor that combines three different parts which flex to follow your individual features for a close shave that's now so comfortable shaving becomes a pleasure the fx performer from wilkinson sword Float away with an arrow. Swap telephone numbers on the line. Call friends at the meeting point. 0891 79 79 79. Before you joined these people, you could play the violin, am I right? <laughs> Not very well. But, but, but I, I could, yeah. yeah How do you know he's called Jim? I was really sorry. In the gym. 
And what does Jim say? Well, Jim says we're all going home in an ambulance. I just left Topshop on Monday lunchtime, and I've never been back. Mm. We must shed our earthly possessions. Jim has spoken. Yeah! Mm. This is the drink which gives them euphoria. This, sadly, is lemon tango. Look, man, it's just not working out. We've got our image to think about, yeah? Now, look, we're called Black Snake, right? Yeah. So we like, we like black. And you, you're kind of... Charcoal. Persil Colour, with its stain-release system, cleans your clothes without bleaching out the colour. So that's it, then? Oh, man! Oh, sorry, mate. That's rock and roll. quite a few letters complaining that we don't treat our hunky flunkies Matthew and Jason with enough respect well it turns out that all these letters were written by two people their mum and their gran well <laughs> we thought it only fair to let them have their say on the show so please welcome the twins mum Doreen and their gran Nelly <laughs> Hello, Doreen. Hello. Hello, Doreen why have you been writing all these letters because I watch the show every week and I don't think the boys do enough. They're talented, good looking, and I don't think they get the respect that they deserve. Oh. 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 I've been told off by a mum. <laughs> oh no. Nelly, now then you're the twins' grandma. Hello. Hello. Now do you not think that we're showing the like the twins full talents? No, I think they deserve much more and they eventually they will be the stars of the show. <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, boys, you know, are you uh, full of interesting facts and information and witty repartee? Uh, no. no. <laughs> well, uh, off you go then. Go and make yourselves useful. Make your uh, mum and gran a nice cuppa. But while they put the kettle on, can we have a big round of applause for Doreen and Nelly? to know he's going to be faithful. It's a matter of trust. When this slick commercial for guest jeans caught their eye, America woke up to the concept Ready. of the Fidelity Ready. Check, a service provided by specialist investigation agencies to check up on a partner's ability to remain faithful. An awful lot of people don't like what I do, but that's their problem. I mean, if your guy's gonna drop his pants, you'd wanna know, right? The Gertie Show went to New York to see how the real boys do it and met up with ex-narcotics cop Jerry Palace, who runs the Checkmate agency. Ready. Business is very good. Uh, I mean, we're getting calls every day from people that are concerned about their specific mates, be it a husband or boyfriend, and uh, they want to know more. 80% of my clients are women, and they come in here with problems. We're like the love police or love detectives, whatever you want to call us. Did you ever catch him in any kind of affair before? Or? And it wasn't long before Jerry's next client walked through the door. Sonia agreed to a sting on her fiance that night and to the girly show secretly filming it. I had been doubting my boyfriend for several months and, you know, kind of doubting myself. I, I'd like to validate my feelings. And I have the perfect girl, this girl, Teresa. Sonia's opted for the use of a decoy, an actress or model who baits bad boys into denying they're in a relationship and asking for a date. Doing the dirty work is Jerry's top performer, Teresa Russo. She's really good. She handles herself right. She feels like she's doing the right thing because she's been in a situation where she had a boyfriend who cheated on her, and she knows what it's like to be dumped on. 99% of the times, if you think your husband's cheating, you're right. He probably is. And tonight, the Checkmate team are hoping to prove that as they take their positions at the Target's favorite watering hole, a popular Manhattan bar. They have strict instructions. There's no kissing, no touching, unless the other person would initiate something. You know, I expect them to go along with it, but we don't initiate any of that. I want to be fair to both the subject and to the client who hired us. 20 minutes into the sting, and Therese has already worked her magic. She's made contact. I'm Tiffany. My name is Bill. Nice to meet you, Bill. Nice to meet you. You here all by yourself? Yes, I'm supposed to meet my girlfriend here. They would like that. Where are you from? I'm from Queens. What do you do? Stockbroker. Really? 
to do that. I graduated, I got my law degree a while ago, and I decided that's just not what I want to go into, so I started selling bonds and friends. Yeah, your girlfriend's not going to come crashing through here and beat me up or anything, right? Absolutely. No girlfriend? Why don't I believe that? Bingo, Teresa's got everything she needs and can leave. The wife always wants to know if he denies her or the children. While the surveillance material gathered tonight could be used in court, many question the ethical legitimacy of entrapment. I think we have a mania for protecting stringent standards of monogamy in this country. It's in all of us to cheat. Um, and I think if you're checking on someone and sort of setting them up in an entrapment situation, you're probably going to get answers you don't want to hear. I don't consider it entrapment. And uh, yeah, maybe most guys would take the bait. But the thing is, just because a door opens, doesn't mean you have to walk through it. For Jerry, tonight's sting is just one more bad guy statistic to add to the checkmate files. But the toughest part of the job is still to come, breaking the news to his client. I'm glad I found out he was a dog. I'm going to pack my things up tomorrow and just leave. I'll give him back the ring, and I can go on with my life. Exposure in the sun was bad for your skin. Well, our next guest has bared all in the sun, page three to be exact, hundreds of times, and she's never looked lovelier. She's gone on to become a queen of perky pop, selling 18 million records worldwide. Please welcome Samantha Fox. Absolutely, a fellow girly, yeah, a short, fellow, definitely. Short Me and you, we're girly. about the same, aren't we? Five foot one. There you go. Now you are the ultimate page three icon. But have you left all that behind you now? Yeah, it is. That page three's behind me. But then again, if say someone like Annie Lieberwitz rang me up or Herb Brits and they said um, we'd like to do some stunning nude photographs of you, and they had a <laughs> you great just idea. Say no, would you? I would do it. Yeah. But I'll you did it. Playboy, didn't you? I did. Yeah. Was that last year? Yeah, just well October actually. And that how was, was that? a dream. It was great. I wanted to do some great pictures that I'd always be proud of and that I could show my children and not be ashamed of them. Now, um, what do you think of Melinda Messenger? Because she's been hailed as the new Sam Fox. Yeah. What did you think when you first saw her in the sun? Um, I thought she was very pretty. Um, you know, she's got a really young face, which is a good thing. She's not got, doesn't wear loads and loads of makeup. I think she's really naturally pretty. Okay, now Melinda's admitted to having a boob job, so, so it may all be, not all be natural. But do you think she's got what it takes? Well, it's a difficult thing about boob jobs. I mean, every time I do an interview, people ask me about boob jobs. Um, all I can say is I've never had one, and I want to put a stop to this other rumour as well. Apparently, I've had them reduced. No way. I mean, oh uh, yeah, because no, I, I mean, I've heard that rumour as well. Yeah, everybody out. I can't believe. I don't know where so it started. Are really. you still a thirty-six double D? Then? No, I'm not. They've actually shrunk. Actually, yes. Why have they shrunk, Sam? I don't know. I think it's because when I was doing modelling, um, my figure was more curvaceous. I didn't do the kind of sport I'm doing now. Now I'm going to the gym more or less every day, and I, I, I like to have more of an uh, athletical figure because on stage I'm up there for two hours, and you can't have these things jigging about. Just, <laughs> they just get in the way, don't they? They do get in the way, you know. Well, you get bruised eyes and everything, you know. Oh. Terrible. So, so now they're, they're nice 36 C, and I'm quite happy with them. They look fantastic. <laughs> now, are they insured? No, they used to be. Obviously, they're not an asset anymore in my life, you know. Right, so they don't <coughs> need to be. No, uh, but they used to be. They used to be about 500,000 each. You're joking, but that's a million pounds a pair. And that was <laughs> 10 years ago, so, you know. Now, you've certainly had an exciting love life, and quite a lot was made of um, you joining the Maya High Club in 1989. Oh, really? really? <laughs> well, it was all in the papers, wasn't it? What was that like? Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Wasn't it a bit cramped? It was obviously those little toilets. They're tiny. Very uncomfortable, I'd imagine. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't in the toilet, actually. <laughs> oh, was it, it was not? in the cockpit. <laughs> not, really, not really, not <laughs> really. Was it really? Yeah, I was flying the plane at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> a woman of many talents, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Now, you auditioned for the part that Madonna got in Dick Tracy, Breathless Mahoney. Yes. Um, so why didn't you get the part, then? <clears throat> well, I wasn't bonking him, was I? <laughs> <laughs> no casting oh, couch for oh, Sam Fox. Oh, well, she was. Wasn't she? She was. Let's she was face going, it. What happened? BT and Madonna. She was going out of him at the time. Okay. So I couldn't compete. What can I do? What can you do? Madonna's great. I love her. And um, she beat me to it. What can I say? She got to Warren before I did. <laughs> now, you may not be a huge in Hollywood, but you certainly are in Bollywood because you're a massive star in India, aren't you? Yeah. And uh, we have, in fact, got a clip of you in action. Have you? Have God, do you know I haven't even seen this? <laughs> this is going to be great. <laughs> I'm 
Most definitely, and thanks for coming on the show. Thank but you before very you much. go, you are going to play us out with your brand new single, aren't you? I am. Let indeed, me be yeah. free. Samantha Fox, everyone. <laughs> Kids, let's have a big hand for tonight's supermodel sweep. It's Gina Lane who's palming it in as Britain's highest paid hand model. But tonight it's both hands on deck to scrub up after the girly show. Thumbs up, Gina. You're super. <laughs> Tuesday nights oozing chemistry. We love you, man. With a beautiful new friendship. I'm a feminist now. I am. Oh, yeah. I am the little guy. Oh, I love him. I think I've dropped the soul. I think he's shy. Unzipped and friendly. Tuesdays from 6 on 4. Enough already. You want to break up, but your ex wants to make up. Next tonight, Ricky Lake meets the couples at odds with closure. Toe curling group therapy. After this. Chat and date. Call friends heart to heart. 0891 97 97 97. And what do we have here? Ah, good morning. Yes, that's what I call the VPP, the virtually perfect pub. How cute. The Brits have discovered virtual reality just as it's virtually out of date. Ooh. Wow. What a piece of work. You can find Germany nil, Jimmy. Ah, that's for words. You know, I bet they drink Harling Black Label on the house. It's brewed longer to taste stronger. 4.1% no less. Well, 